Hey, rock star, Steve, aka Void here, and I want to welcome you to this week's episode of Pajama Jam. So I'm a little bit under the weather today, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Um, I'll get into all of that in just a second. But anyway, I'm really happy to have you here. Today is um, definitely going to be a cool episode <clears throat> because, not because I'm sick, but because I'm going to be playing one of my... I guess this is sort of like the nemesis. Like there's there's a riff that when I was a kid, I uh, always wanted to play. And uh, it was the opening solo to Fade to Black, playing it up to speed. And um, there was just this one one thing that I just really like that always tripped me up anyway. So I, this last time I even thought about playing this riff was uh, and the solo was, oh man, must have been. I don't know, what, like 20, 20 years ago, maybe? I don't know. It was something something like that. Anyway, so welcome to the session. Um, and let me know where you're coming in from, um, where you're watching from. Hey, James, how's it going, buddy? So um, <clears throat> we should have a pretty good turnout today. Hopefully the frog in my throat doesn't scare you away and uh, we can have a good jam tonight. So hopefully you brought your pajamas and uh, you brought your guitar. Pajama jams are definitely um, becoming one of my favorite things to do. So pajama jams started off as just something where, you know, I'm a new dad and I just wanted to have some time to practice. And so, uh, you know, nighttime seemed like the part of the time that made sense because I, you know, everyone was asleep and I could just come downstairs and I can uh, just practice. And so then I thought what would be cool is that I could broadcast the practice. And um, and here we are. So I'll get into some of the specifics, but let's see uh, who we've got here. So we've got, oh, uh, hey, Lance, Lance and Karen watching from your resort in South Florida. Why are you watching me? Why are you watching some, some sick, uh, so under the weather, Italian guitarist, um, <clears throat> You should be enjoying your vacation. Hopefully you are. Hopefully it's nice and warm over there, uh, which I'm sure it is. Cool. Chris Lucky Olson. Lucky, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Dave is here from Connecticut. Um, awesome. James is here. Uh, Stella, Peter, yes. Yes, welcome, welcome. Uh, Denny, good to see you. Just finishing your shift. Going to watch what you can. Cool. Awesome. And the same link that you use to get to this link, uh, to this video live, is going to be the same for the replay. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, guys. So, some big news actually, I just got right before the Pajama Jam is the audiobook is now live on Audible, which is awesome because I love Audible. I mean, I love audiobooks. And <clears throat> um, with Audible, you know, it just downloads right to your phone and um, all the different controls and just the chapters and how it's all accessible like that. Really, really cool. So, it's it's on Audible, it's on Kindle, it's on paperback. The book is definitely um, definitely available. I'm very, very excited about this. I still have my proof copy. I'm getting the first shipment of books uh, to my house very soon. And um, yeah, if you got the book, let me know if you got the book and um, if you're enjoying it. I see some familiar faces over here who I know have the book and uh, some people who have been nice enough to share a review on Amazon. I'm very, very grateful. Um, Karen Redman, looking at you. Thank you so much. That was unexpected that you'd be reading the book on the plane, but Lance told me all about it. I appreciate it. Um, so that is uh, what just happened. So Audible just... Uh, it was waiting for days and days and days to process. And so now it is um, on Audible and you can get it in all of uh, Amazon's formats, basically. Very excited about that. So cool. I see Don is here. I see Randy is here. Great to have you guys. Cool. Now, if you've never been to a pajama jam before, basically here's how it works. So I'm going to be learning how to play tonight. I'm going to be learning how to play the intro solo to fade to black by Metallica. Now you might be thinking, well, why is he learning it? So this is my practice time technically. And, um, and I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about the things that I'm thinking while I'm practicing. Because if you see someone who practices really well and has a good system, then you could use that same, uh, the same systems in your own practicing and uh, cut your learning curve in half. So cool. Joe, thank you so much, brother. Got the book. An excellent read. Thank you, man. So this book, Practice Less, Play More, it outlines a, a pattern, a formula, a system that you can use to play songs in less time. And um, nice, Johnny Warda. Awesome, buddy. Great to have you. Now, that system, I'm going to be using that 
in this uh, session over here in the Pajama Jam, and I'm going to be using that to learn. Well, the aim is to learn the intro solo to fade to black up to speed in 30 minutes or less. We're going to have the countdown timer. Everything is going to be legit, and we'll see if I can do it. It's always fun. Always fun. Sometimes a photo finish, but um, that is how it works. And if it's your first time uh, coming here and you're a beginner, then, you know, and if you have your guitar, then you could either, you know, participate or you could just kind of relax, watch as I kind of try to beat the clock and just pay attention to the things that I'm saying about how I'm breaking it down when I make a mistake, because I definitely will make a mistake tonight. Um, many in this part. I'm already just, I know that it's going to happen. So just watch how I recover from the mistakes. Watch how I react to the mistakes. Watch how, um, how I build up the parts bit by bit. Okay, now, um, cool, Jim, awesome, buddy. Um, yes, I'm going to be putting the book into action right now. So if you're a beginner, I, I think, you know, just grab some popcorn, enjoy the, enjoy the show. Um, if you're an intermediate player, then what you can do is you can follow along with the tab if you want, and you can incorporate that, that into your playing. Uh, again, you know, by no means, you can just basically do whatever you want while you're watching this, of course. Um, but the primary goal here is to watch someone who has a good practice system and a good practice methodology just kind of going step by step through learning a song i just don't see that really anywhere online i wish that i had something like this when i was uh, first learning so hey darren how's it going man so fade to black this is a song that when i was in high school i actually it was even before high school it was in elementary school so i think in grade seven or eight so i was a drummer primarily and i remember my buddies used to come over and play metallica riffs and when i started playing guitar and started teaching myself how to play oh man i just really really wanted to play metallica riffs and solos and fade to black was one of them i remember my buddy dave he was just playing this and i was just so jealous because he was playing the intro so well and i thought I actually thought, you know, my long skinny fingers were a disadvantage. It was like it took so long to get down to the to the fret. He had like shorter fingers and he was so fast. Anyway, um, I just couldn't really figure it out. So, you know, what is that? I don't know if that's 20 years later. I can't really do the math right now. My daughter, my baby daughter, she's 13 months old. And uh, yesterday or two days ago, I was playing with her and she coughed right in my mouth. So for anybody who's been around kids, has a kid, uh, grandkids, you know how baby germs are just so fierce. And so I just knew right then and there that I was sick. So hopefully I don't lose my voice, but I've got my um, orange juice over here and we'll, um, we'll, we'll get this going. All right. So cool. James, congrats on um, you're about to pre-order the guitar. Very cool. And Chris, welcome, buddy. So fade to black. What I'm going to basically be doing here is I'm going to be loading up the tab in just a second. And I'm going to be looking at a few things. I've already prepared the tab. So I've done my pre-practice. This is something I call pre-practice. So I've prepared my tab. I prepared my metronome with the correct setting. I also, um, what else did I do? I tuned the guitar. I just made sure that everything was ready so that when it was time to practice, I didn't have to do anything except for practice. So pre-practice is a very important step. I also, um, I looked at the tab to just make sure that there wasn't any, um, there weren't any weird things on, um, you know, I just scrolled through, you know, just my eyes just scrolling through on the screen and I made sure there weren't any weird um, techniques or anything like that that I thought would make a... Um, make for a more challenging experience. So uh, what I'm going to do when I load up the tab, I'm going to go through my steps and I'll explain what that, that those steps are when I get there. Okay, cool. Hey, Doug. Hey, David. Good to have you here. So let's switch over to the, the tab right now. And what we'll do is we'll actually fire up the countdown. So you should be able to see the countdown there. Let me actually move that over there. All right, so we've got about 30 minutes. I'm not going to really want to waste any time today because I'm going to need all, every single second here. So, all right, here we are. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, so again, with, um, with Fade to Black, I look at the tempo and I get that going on the uh, metronome. Okay, now what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to um, 
record the rhythm part. So the rhythm part I know, I've, I've known for, for a little while. And um, that's a little bit over here, and that's also over here. So I already know that part, and I'm going to record it. I'm just going to practice it once. If um, I could have done this in pre-practice as well, prepared the, the loop, but I wanted to just do this on uh, camera. Just so to make it a little bit more exciting. And as you can see, there's a link right above. If you want to request a song for Pajama Jams, you could do that as well. So let me just get this going here. So... Okay, so let's get that going. Okay, so that's pretty much, there might be a little skip in the loop there. But let's just make sure. Okay, it's not bad. There's a little bit of a skip there, but whatever. That's totally fine. That should be okay. So I've got that going so I could play along with the um, with the, a rhythm track. Um, in the future, we'll be doing some pajama jams off of Facebook, and I'll be able to play along with the actual record. So, um, so we have that. Now, we're going to need the metronome because I'm going to reduce the tempo for um, step two. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through this tab and I'm going to do something called no tempo practice. So no tempo practice means I am going to um, play through the different sections. So here's one of the, the parts of the solo and then over here, let me make sure we've got everything on the screen here. Okay. So, um, and let me just, let me know guys that you could see and hear everything clearly. I just, I forgot to do that tech part. So checking here. Um, so I'm basically going to just go through the solo slowly, actually with no tempo and just make sure that I can, um, see like uh, before I looked through, I scanned through the, the tab with my eyes, but now I'm actually going to play some of the things and see if any, there's any weirdness of like fingers or, um, you know, if there's any weird techniques or anything like that. So no tempo though, nothing steady. Okay. So this part up here, I'm just double checking this part. I want to see if I can get that on camera. Okay. Okay. Let's get both things on camera there. So sliding. Mm -hmm. So here I'm just playing no tempo. So and then the next line. And I'll keep you guys in the loop over here so that you could see what, what's going on. I'm just going no tempo. Okay. I mean this part here. And then I think it slides up. So well, very important part here that, that I'm doing. So I'm just going through this slow solo here, which is pretty straightforward with the tab that I'm seeing. I mean, the, the killer part was the part that was um, that's next. But I just want to say something real quick. The most important thing that I'm doing here is I'm playing a solo and a song that I know and I love. It has a very, very... Um, you know, it's very deep in my memory here, very like in my long term memory, this song is just is, is basically baked in because I've heard it so many times and I have a history with this song. So if I was learning a song or a solo from a band I've never heard before, or a song I've never heard before, then that would be a completely different thing. The reason why I know the rhythms and things like that, that, that's part of what shortcuts the learning curve is that I know this song. Okay, so playing songs you love is so important for so many reasons, but one of the reasons is because of this. It's gonna help you to play it faster because you know what it's supposed to sound like. So right now, I'm actually just, um, I'm going through it with no tempo, okay? And so let's keep going. Just so I see, so far there was nothing really weird there. It was just sort of slides and hammer-ons and pull-offs and things like that. Let's see this. This is the part that always scared me. Okay. So let's just see here. So 15. Okay, actually, I'm going to switch over to my guitar cam. Whoops. Okay. So I'm going to play. So no tempo. Okay, and get this chord out of the way here. 
And I'm not really worried about pick strokes or fingers. Just going with whatever I'm seeing at a slow enough speed that I'm just kind of going in order. Okay, yeah, and again, my the song's playing in my head, right? So I know it's pl playing at my own speed here. It's like a scale. Okay, it's a little bit longer. Normally, if I had le more time, I would actually go through the first half first with the whole system. But because I have 23 minutes, I'm going to kind of fast track this process. So when you're going through it with long parts like this, you probably want to break it up. But So I'll stop pretty much there. I mean, I guess the next part, it's like a scale. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll probably go... Okay, so what I did there, it's a very important step. I, I exposed myself to the, to the notes, but I did that with no tempo. I did it so that I could check if there was anything weird, like if there's any weird finger overlaps or anything. Everything in here it just seems like one finger per fret. It makes logical sense, okay? And so the main thing to take away here is that I'm doing no tempo practice first, okay? Because I'm going through the section I'm about to play. It's almost like I'm looking through the map and I'm seeing if there's any problems on the road, any closures, any construction, things like that, any detours. So now that I've got that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play slow tempo. Now, slow tempo is where I play so slow I can't make a mistake. And that's with a steady tempo. So here I'm going to start with this, what I call a chunk. This is one little small section, and this is called a chunk. And I'm going to check the, the tempo is supposed to be 116. So I'm going down to, to 60. So, okay, and I'm going to do this three times without making a mistake. Okay, and I can see in the tab, it's going to go to the ninth fret over here. Okay, again, guys, don't worry about the specifics here about the exact notes. If you want to learn fade to black, then definitely watch this, but, um, or even an in-depth tutorial on YouTube. But right now, I'm just going through, I'm showing you how I'm learning this part. Okay, so this part lands here, so it goes. Okay, so that's the chunk. Two times. Then the so that's three times without making a mistake. Once I can do that three times without making a mistake, I can move on. Either increase the speed, increase the, um, the amount, or I can increase the complexity. So increasing the speed is just increasing the speed from 60 BPM, and I can keep going higher. Um, increasing the amount means that I can play more. I could play, let's say, now more of the song. Um, if I increase the complexity, maybe in some of these sections, I might not do any of the slides or bends. And then if I did it that part without any of that stuff three times without making a mistake, then I'd move on by uh, making it more complex by adding those slides back in. Okay. Now, all of this is outlined inside my book, but I'm just, I just want to give you a little bit of that just in case you've never, never heard of this before. So let's say... Okay. Now... Now, I'm going also by what I hear in my head. So sometimes there might be like a hammer on or not a hammer on. And I'm kind of just going with that for now. If it doesn't sound like it, then, or if it feels very strange, then I'm not going to do it. But with a time limit like this, I'm just making music. That's the number one thing that I want to do here. So. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the amount. So I'm going to finish the line here. Actually, I'm just going to kind of keep getting coverage because there's so much to do. And wow, this time, timer is flying. So, so I'm going to put some slides and bends in there. Because that's kind of how I remember it. Maybe there's a live version that's in my head. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to do... Um, so this is a longer line. Okay, two times. Then the third time. 
Okay. okay, so I'm I'm happy with that. Three times without making a mistake. I've got a motor over here, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do some pretty ambitious um, chunks. So I'm gonna go. And I don't care if it's not in there with slide or hammer. Okay. Um, so. Oh, actually, I did. Yeah, I went a little bit further down. You guys can't see it on the on the page, so I'm actually going to scroll up. Um, so let's do it again. So, because there's just so much on this solo, so I want to boogie. I want to get through this thing. So. Okay. So then, last time. Okay. Okay, now I want to mention that there's um, this year. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Like none of this stuff is stressing me out. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to because it's a slow speed. I'm actually going to just move on. Normally I do three times without making a mistake, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this. Um, I'm just kind of looking ahead. Okay, and then it slides up. Yeah, I'm just going to confirm. I'm just going with my ear over here. But yeah, it goes to the 10th fret. So this is the part that I really want to capture. So I'm going to move forward to this and spend the bulk of this session on here. Um, so here, this part, oh man, I like, I'm getting like tr um, post-traumatic stress over here from, um, from this part from when I was a kid. But let's just go through it with a slow speed. Yeah, so I'm actually just going to go at a slow speed. I'm going to control the speed, but... Um, So, so I did three times at that same speed. I know I did four, but I, the second, third, and fourth one were at the, all at the same speed, a bit faster. So, okay. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the speed, okay? I'm making sure that it's all steady. And so I did it three times without making a mistake before moving on. Moving on to what? I increased the speed. Okay, now let's go to the next part um i gotta go pretty ambitious with these chunks here guys i don't even care if i could fall flat on my face if i make two mistakes in a row that's when i start to decrease things speed amount and complexity does it make sense guys i know i'm kind of blasting through this but there's only like 30 minutes so i've got a i've got a boogie over here um whoops so that's one two Oh, I made a mistake. Okay, so that resets the counter. One. Two. Three. Okay. So, um... <laughs> Ken, late. Just in time for the stress. Good, good. Yeah, you got here right in time, buddy. This is, uh high school or like elementary school um i'm making things right over here so now let's see i'm gonna add because i played three times the make mistake i'm gonna add this part here so i'm gonna slow it down just a little bit um Okay, what I'm actually going to do is, I think I'm going to play a pull-off here. Um, yeah, this. Or even two. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because it's going to be faster. Remember, I only have so much time to play this, so... I've, guys, don't be afraid to modify the parts so that you can get there faster, especially with leads. If there's no pull-off there, just put a pull-off in there just so that you can get the hang of it, play along with the track. And then you could always, like, at the beginning, technically it should be like this. All picks, ba 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 But I'm doing... So I'm doing a, a pull-off there. <coughs> Do you think anybody cares? I mean, I don't. So and I'm having fun. Um, 
So just always feel free. Don't take this as scripture, guys. This isn't the Bible here where you have to play like this, 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 and this, and this. Okay? I'm going to take a quick drink here. Does that make sense, guys? I want to actually stop there for a second. I want to just know that it makes sense. You can't be precious with these parts. If, if a pull-off makes this easier, go with the pull-off. Okay? So let me know in the chat box that that makes sense because that's a really, really important thing. Um, so that, this, this is good. Um, okay. So that's good. <coughs> Excuse me. Baby germs are strong. Okay. So, uh, let's see. This is all pretty, this seems like all pretty much scale stuff. It's really, you know what? It's the whole point of this, um, uh, like the mountain that I needed to climb, I think already happened. But da 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 da. That part there, I think, is the fastest part. I think it's going to be the hardest part. So, um, so yeah, I'm actually I'm just going to stop right here. And also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little red square. If you if you were doing this on a piece of paper, you'd mark this right here. This is the part. This is the this is the area right here. Okay, this is the problem area. So um, let me, now we're just working on this chunk here. Okay, I'm working on this chunk. Okay, and if you had a proper practice session, like without a countdown timer, then you can, you know, chip away at this for a few days. Um, typically what you'll do, you'll do three times without making a mistake, and then you'd go up three to five BPM. Uh, all the way up to the target tempo, okay? Three to five BPM at a time because you don't want your brain to f to realize that the tempo switched too much, so you want it to kind of trick it to make it feel like it's the same thing. Um, and that's what three to five BPM does. So here I'm just playing this part here. I've really got a boogie here, guys. Okay, let's see. Let me actually just skip overhead to the target tempo. You've seen different pajama jams. You see that I tackle this in different ways. You know, get used to tackling it in different ways. Yeah. Okay, it's faster than I thought it was. Oh, man. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of go through the rest. Okay. Um, just to get the coverage. Um, okay, so normally three times without making a mistake, folks. Don't do it. Um, what I'm doing here. Don't try this at home. Okay, so then, again, okay, that's three times, okay, and then I'm actually just going to end at this part here, because my loop, this is what my loop is doing, because um, this next part, that part's not even in the looper, so I'm just going to end here, okay, so, and here, And last one. Okay, so what I got to do, I've got to devote the most time to the to the problem area. And because of this speed, it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. So my stress meter is not necessarily uh, in the sweet spot of two or three. I'm kind of like at a six right now. So I just got to make sure I conquer this part. So this, I'm going to go with a small little chunk. ba da 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 Three times. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna baby step this, it's called. So, I'm just adding one note at a time. And also, I'm using my uh, Jazz 3 pick for this, more precise than, let's say, a Tortex 0.73. Okay, so here. Okay, I'm gonna add one more, one more note, three times. Yeah, again. Okay, cool. So I'm going to add more. Um, I'm actually going to go to the next, um, go to the next little part here. Um, again, again. Okay, let's see if uh, puzzle piecing works here. Okay, so this is combining two chunks. Um, three, four, three, four, three, four. Three, four, three, four. Okay. Um, now, 
Let's go a little bit slower, connect them. Oops. It's gradually speeding it up. Okay. Okay, let's just see what's the speed. It's not too bad. Okay. Also, my adrenaline's pumping a little bit here. So now I could see this part being a bit of a problem, the next line. So. Okay, cool. So I, it's actually, that's actually pretty good. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get to this bend here. Uh, I'm just gonna review this part. Okay, and again, I'm bro breezing through this because it's, I got like nine minutes left, not even, so. Okay, again. Okay, last one. Ah, mistake, we're set. Okay. Last time. Okay, all right. Um, now, I'm just gonna kind of go through it again. I've got the tab over here. I'm actually gonna zoom out a little bit, guys. Um, I don't know why the why that is a little bit small there. Okay, that should be okay. Now, um, I'm gonna get rid of the red because I don't want that to freak me out. I don't want the anticipation of this part to freak me out. I wanna use as much time as possible to play this. Um, what I'm gonna do, look at the tab. Um, uh, By the time I get to that section, it should be okay. So let me see. Okay, I'm looking over the tab, let's see here. Mm. Okay. part that I didn't think that I was going to make the mistake on. Um, okay, so let's see. Little mistake. It's okay. Okay, so now, um, um, that's actually, that's better than I thought it was going to be. Um, kind of just breezing through this over here. But that's good. That's actually better than I've, uh, you know, than, definitely better than when I was like, 20 years ago when uh, I couldn't even play the ba-da-ba-da. -ba -da. I couldn't even play the da-da-da-da. I couldn't, I couldn't even do that part there. Um, so the fact that that's all musical is really good. Now I'm just going to kind of breeze through this intro part here. Okay. following the tab because before I exposed myself to this tab <coughs> excuse me I exposed myself to this tab um, with my fingers I looked at it before like I quickly scanned that with my eyes just to make sure there weren't any problem areas and all that prep work really helped just where I could kind of follow along again this is in my head guys I heard this song so many times I know what it's supposed to sound like so I kind of follow along because I know this is supposed to slide up at that part so I kind of predict what's happening that's a big part of of learning this uh, quickly okay now I'm doing it at a really hyper speed here and I recommend, you know, inside my book, I recommend the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step of what to do. Um, you do it at a much slower speed and much, uh, you know, more uh, systematic sort of uh, pace to, to the whole thing rather than jumping in the deep end. But I just because the time limit. So um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it a bunch of times, guys. I'm gonna I have to kind of work from memory a little bit. Um, but I, I kind of remember what it's supposed to sound like. So hopefully I can. Hmm. I'm just glancing over it here. I think I can get past that part with by memory. Um, so it's just going to be more about this part here. Okay, let's get it going here. Um, so. Um, just going over it. Um, middle 
middle finger, then go... Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to play along. I'm going to use the last four and a half minutes to just play along. Um. enough of this to where I want to play um, with let's with some effects so let's get that on there some delay okay um, and a little bit of a more of a brash tone so <laughs> get that again. I felt some tension creeping up there. So hold on one sec. Okay. Okay, let's do this. was pretty good i mean i'll probably I'll take that because there was like a little mistake in there but i kept going always keep going when you're playing like just if you can just always keep going don't stop because of a little mistake like that let's go again i'm just going to use the time just i'm going to use the time as much as possible um to get one that i'm i'm really really happy with but that was that was good I, i'll take that one I'll, I'll take that one. I'll definitely take that one. Oh man, yes. Okay, so <laughs> the you guys, have, you guys have to understand that um, <laughs> this part is not like not just something that I've wanted to play like kind of for twenty minutes. Like I want, <laughs> I always wanted to play this part when I was when I was younger, and um, that part all the time I could feel. I could feel the tension building up. When I was a kid, I remember I could feel that tension just building up as it approached this section. Like, that part, I'm just kind of like always like tensing up. And I could even feel that now, um, before this part started where I went... Um, so I went, because I went... Right before the solo, -da 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 -da. <coughs> what I felt was... A little bit of tension and so what I did was I went like this kind of loosened up the tent the muscle and I took a deep breath through my nose even though I'm not playing saxophone let's say where it needs breath or singing where it needs breath breathing before you play something getting oxygen through your blood is so important in um, in relaxing okay because if you are holding your breath that's what we normally do when we're playing. We're kind of like holding and it's tight. Everything's tight. So our muscles are tight. Our right hand being tight influences our left hand. It's called sympathetic tension. And, um, and then also our muscles influence our mind. And there's, our mind is tense. Our brain is tense. So we can't think clearly. Okay. And it's a pretty good measure being, uh, you know, I'm a little under the weather here and a little bit dopey, um, you know, from, from being sick here. But it's, it's just, 
you know, I got to use as many resources as possible um, while I'm sick. And so I've got to make sure that I'm not tense because I don't have that much energy right now. And so what I do before big parts coming up, I make sure I just breathe in. Okay. Might be a different story if I was stuffed up, but, um, but it's just like, just getting some oxygen in and that, that way when it comes to the next part, to the part that I was really kind of, um, I guess that was the anticipation part, right? That's the part that you don't, you don't really, like you're not looking forward to that section. For singers, sometimes that's like hitting a high note or something like that. And um, anyway, that's kind of, that's how I handled it, okay? So that was actually pretty cool that I was sort of rushing I mean, I've been developing and using this system for a long time, and, and so it's very reliable. And so I could jump to different things. I could play it faster. I could play sometimes without the metronome, or I could do advanced techniques like, you know, um, baby steps or, uh, or puzzle piecing, things like that. Anyway, my point is, is there's a predictable order of steps that you go through. And what I did here, even though it was a very condensed, you know, little window of time, and a little snapshot of the of the methodology and the system, I still did the same things. I prepared for my practice session, so my entire practice session, 30 minutes, is strictly for practicing the part. I'm not starting by tuning up or getting the metronome going, things like that, I'm getting the tab loaded. I'm making sure that it's all ready to go for me, and I did that work. I also looked at the tab first just to make sure there weren't any um, weird parts. This all seems like a scale. You know, what I could have done, I could have also recorded the loop. Um, I could have recorded that loop before the session. That also ate into some of the time there. Okay. Um, so you could do all those things. And then I went through no tempo practice, which has no speed, no tempo or anything. It's just I'm going through the tab. I'm experiencing the tab, going through the different parts, seeing if there's anything weird. Um, then I'm going through slow tempo practice, which is playing so slow I can't make a mistake on a little chunk so that I could play that with a steady pulse. And then I do that three times without making a mistake. Once I could do that, I, do, I move into what's called the fast practice formula. So I go three times without making a mistake before moving on. Moving on to what? If I play that chunk three times, I could either increase the speed, I can increase the amount, um, I can increase the complexity. And also, one big thing that I did was I also made this thing my own that, I don't know, I mean, maybe there's little techniques in there that Kirk Hammett plays that it would have taken longer to get in 30 minutes. But I have 30 minutes, guys. And what I played to me, I mean, I'll have to check the replay, but it sounded like music to me. What do you guys think? I mean... Um, See Ken, awesome Johnny and Darren, um, giving some, uh, showing some love over here. So it's it's cool. I mean, it seems like that sounded like music, guys. And I really want you to make sure you're not precious about the parts that you're playing. It's very important that you play something that sounds like music. It doesn't matter if you're playing the, all the pull-offs or the slides or all the same moves. Can you follow along? Does it sound like music? That's the most important thing. Okay, and um, and that's the highlight for me from tonight's pajama jam episode because it's it's the modification of these parts that sometimes is the difference between playing it quickly and struggling for weeks. Why struggle for weeks? You need like why struggle for weeks and never play it, uh, anything musical? Rather than modify a couple of things, make a musical version out of it, even if it was slower. You know, maybe the modification you have to make is that you're playing it slower, but as long as there's that steady pulse, that's what's music. Okay, guys, you got to remember notes and chords and steady pulse. That's music. Stop and go. You know, if everything sounds like no tempo practice, that's not music. Music has a steady pulse. No tempo is functional as part of the practice less play more system. It's functional. It allows for you to experience the tab. But it's really, um, it's really all about making sure that your goal is playing music. All right, guys, is that clear? Is that clear? Let me know um, in, the, in the chat box. So I'm just going to read some comments over here. Uh, Roger, very impressive demonstration of learning in chunks, putting it all together. Awesome jam tonight. Loving the book as well. Oh, cool. That's great, buddy. Very, very happy about that. Um, Robert, hey, I love Metallica and metal, all of it. Very nice. Yes, yes, yes. Tommy. 
Great to see you, buddy. Sounded really good over here down in Tennessee. Awesome. Thank you, bud. Stella Peter. Um, thank you, Steve. Good stuff. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you, uh, David. Thanks. Uh, that was amazing. Great job. Awesome, bud. Really, really appreciate that. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> Johnny, go get some rest. Um, yeah, I got, I'm going to be doing a little bit of, uh, a little bit more work tonight. I'm going to be, um, working on some, some songs and stuff. It's okay. I mean, my throat is just a little bit wonky. That's all. And I cough every once in a while, but it's, um, it's all good. I love hanging out with you guys. So, um, again, I mean, if you want to learn how I did what I did tonight, Definitely grab a copy of my book, Practice Less, Play More. Uh, for anybody who came into the broadcast a little bit later, so the book is in paperback format, in Kindle format, and it just got announced or just got um, released. Right before the session, I got a notification that it's now available on Audible. I love Audible, you know, downloading the book right to the app. And um, just making it easy um, is so great. I love audiobooks, and um, and now that's available. So if that's what you how you like to consume information on the drive to work, then definitely check it out. You'll hang out with me. My voice didn't sound like it had a frog in my throat. So um, you get three and a half hours of me walking you through the different steps, and um, and you can use that to learn songs and solos and riffs and pretty much anything because all of these principles and the system that's laid out in this book it all follows with how the human brain learns and how to reduce your uh, practice time and focus on what really matters which is playing music okay so practice let's play more is my new book it's best-selling book um you know we've been uh, number one in over 50 categories uh, across a bunch of different countries on amazon i'm very very excited about that and um grab your copy if you haven't yet it is a very cool book and i'm very proud of it so now with the remaining time because we have a little bit of time i'm curious to know if uh, if you have any questions for me about really anything let me know what you're working on in your playing um and i will be sure to uh to answer them so i'm just going to kind of sit back a little bit here all right, cool, cool. Robert, I want a physical book also. Cool. Yeah, so check it out on Amazon. Um, I'm not sure where you're from, Robert, but uh, just check it out on Amazon and they have it for you. All right, Joe, no pressure. Learning in chunks, great advice from you in the book. Every guitarist and beginner to advance can learn something that will be a benefit to them. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's... Um, we got to get rid of the perfectionist. I, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I have to keep, you know, on top of that every day, just making sure I don't fall into that trap where I got to have things perfect. If I was being a perfectionist, I wouldn't have changed some of the key parts into a pull off or hammer on things like that. And I might still not be able to play it right now. But in half an hour, I was able to play this solo, a solo that kind of in like, I have a history with this solo in the sense of it built up stress in me that like, oh my God, am I going to be able to play this? And like I was, I failed so many times in the past. So um, yeah, it's definitely, it's important not to be a perfectionist and just progress over perfection. Play now, polish later. Okay. Um, Mark. Uh, just started reading your book, like what I'm reading. Very cool. And guys, please, if you um, if you want to take a second to share your highlights and insights from the book, you know the takeaways. If uh, I'd really, really appreciate uh, an Amazon review. If you haven't already, um, if you have already, thank you so much. The reviews are really the lifeblood of a book. Uh, when I buy stuff on Amazon, which is a lot, almost daily, I always look at the reviews. So if you do have a moment to uh, to check out Amazon and you bought it um, paperback or Kindle and soon now um, Audible uh, if that now that's live and you put a review on there I'd love to, to, to see what your biggest takeaways from the book were um, Darren working on wherever I may roam right now by Metallica very cool yes uh, Black Album very cool song yeah I think was I can't remember if the Black Album was my first Metallica record that that I got. I mean, I was obsessed with Metallica when I was younger. Oh man. It went Nirvana. Uh, cause I was a drummer. Uh, pr like first I was a drummer. And, uh, so I was playing a lot of Dave Grohl beats and then I became a guitar player. And I remember like 
Nirvana riffs then turned into Metallica riffs and just obsessed with Metallica, just anything and everything. I had the box set. Um, what was it like? Uh, binge live binge and purge or something like that. I can't remember on, on, I can't remember what the box set was called, but it was like a little, little sort of like treasure chest sort of thing. Um, with like a tour lanyard and VIP pass and all that stuff. That was, it was super cool. Anyway, um, good memories for sure. Great album. Great album. Definitely. Um, yeah. So guys, I'll be here for another 10 minutes or so. Let me know if, um, if you have any questions about your own guitar playing, what areas you are having trouble with yourself. And, um, and then maybe we could find a quick solution for you. And if you need more help in your guitar playing, be sure to reach out to me, um, send me a message and we'll see if there's a program or something that, um, I can help you, you know, to take your playing to the next level, because these these systems and these sort of these steps that I work on over here, it's all predictable. And so the more that you do it, really my goal is just to teach you how to fish. Just every single time you approach a song, no matter how you're learning it online, in a, in a membership program, in, uh, you know, if, even if you're taking one-on-one lessons, if you are reading from songbooks, it doesn't matter. I want to be able to help you to learn the, the, give you the ability to learn songs on demand. And so it doesn't matter where you're learning from. It doesn't matter if you have another guitar coach. My goal is to help you navigate all the craziness that exists online. So let's see here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jim, nice. So we have live, beep, binge and purge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, great box set. Uh, Ken, trying to set up a podcast interview for your book. Oh, thanks, buddy. If I set that up, would you... would uh, would you be able to share a uh, five to 10 or do you want to share the five to 10 minute segment or, um, or do you want me to share the segment? I'll share whatever. Um, and you could share whatever. Yes. Both, whether it's me or you, you could share. It's a sports podcast out of Missouri, but the cause is special for everyone. Ken, you know what, man, you just name the time and the place. Um, uh, if it's your podcast, awesome. Uh, if you are, um, if it's someone that you know, just reach out to me and tell me the details. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, all proceeds from the book, the Kindle, the audio book, all proceeds go to create new programs for cancer patients and their caregivers through my fundraising initiative, Void Cancer. Um, this is a cause that is very, very important to me. And, um, and so all proceeds, every single dollar that comes in from this book is going to be going to a great cause. And I'm very, very happy about that. So just in case you didn't know, that is where it's going. You pick up your guitar and you're playing and you're learning some great techniques and just know that awesome stuff is happening because of your purchase. Um, Robert, Prax Makes Perfect. Uh, I have not had a lot of time with the book because I work so much. So Robert, yeah, definitely um, check out the book and how, yes, okay, so practice is obviously, it's an important element. You can't just, you know, it's not going to be a magic pill, but you'll be surprised how even when you're busy and how even when, um, you know, even when you do have time, the, the system that I lay out is going to make sure that you practice less and play more. That's why the book is called that is because that is the promise. Um, Ken, like them to interview you. Yes, 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 definitely. Ken, name the, name the time and the place for sure. Um, cool. James, I see you got to go. Have a wonderful night, man. Awesome, buddy. Great. So yeah, guys, if there's anything else that, um, if you're curious about anything else, um, if you want to, again, uh, you know, I've got a great program called play from day one right now. Uh, the membership is closed, but you can get on the waiting list and you fill out a short little application. Just let me know about your guitar playing, uh, check out play from day one. That's the number one play from day one.com. And then you'll go to the waiting list. You can get on that waiting list and then I'll reach out to you, uh, when spots are available, if it feels like the right fit. And, um, that's pretty much it. So again, audible, um, check it out check out the book in any, any format that it's available in, check out the replay of this pajama jam just to see how I'm going through things. And more importantly, the choices, the choices that I make, seeing how much time I have available, even though I don't think, unless you guys are broadcasting pajama jams, I don't think that it's going to be as intense. Like maybe you might be short on time, but you don't have to learn the whole thing in one sitting. You can also 
just break it up into three or four sittings. Okay. I have fun with it. I make it like kind of like a game show, but, um, but anyway, so I want you to use this information so that you shortcut your learning curve. Like you shorten your learning curve. You watch the, the techniques I use and you use those in your own playing. That's the goal. Okay. So this is fade to black, but you could use it on anything. Uh, so Jim has a question. Any suggestions on how to get better at playing with the metronome quickly? Like that solo, I can play, but my timing is always a little sloppy. Okay, so actually, if you don't have that much experience playing with a metronome, I actually think that you should play along with the record. And just get a program like Riff Station or Transcribe, or even on YouTube, you could slow it down. And get used to playing along with that, because with, with the record... You know, you're playing along with drums, you're playing along with other instruments, and you could also, I mean, it's just musical, right? If I'm playing along with this the whole time, it's really not that interesting. It's not even, it's not that fun either. But playing along with the record, even like I set up a loop for myself, even that's fun because that just feels like I'm playing with another guitar player. Make it musical, guys. Um, you know, in my book, that's all, really all I talk about is playing music because the guitar is meant to play music. It's chapter one of my book. And that's what it's all about. The guitar is not meant to play, you know, to, to the click like that, unless you were recording a record, like an instrument, instrumental guitar record or something like that. And you had to play the first track was, you know, it was just guitar and you're playing to a click. Other than that, guitars usually play to other instruments, even when you're recording, because the drums will already have been laid down or the bass, things like that. So when you're learning a song, I'd much rather that you were learning, um, you were practicing with the record as much as possible. Now, yes, I mentioned that playing with a metronome, uh, increasing the BPM, things like that are important, but... If you're using a program like Riff Station, let's say, then you'll get actually, um, you'll get, if it detects it properly, you'll get the click and you'll get the record and you'll be able to up the speed however much you want. I recommend every single time you could play a chunk three times without making a mistake. Every time you, you pass that to the next level, you move on and you increase the speed. You go three to five BPM faster. And so that means that you're bringing the click up, you're bringing the song up in speed and the whole time, the more you can actually play along with the record, the better. Okay. Um, Jim saying thanks. Explains why I'm always better um, off live with, with my band. Yes. Yes, for sure. Playing with real music, man. That's, it's so important because you'll be surprised too. Okay. So nothing against Lars Ulrich. Ul Ulrich. I call him Ul Lars Ulrich. Anyway, he was, used to be one of my favorite drummers. Um, then I started getting into some heavier stuff and more technical stuff. Um, but like Danny Carey from Tool or Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, or formerly of Dream Theater. Anyway, um, it's, yeah, it, like Lars Ulrich, his timing is kind of like, it's questionable whether that's even like perfectly on the click. So I wouldn't even worry about like the metronome being, being steady like that. As long as you're close, it's fine. But that's more reason to play along with a drummer because it doesn't have to be perfect. A metronome's perfect because it's a robot, but like a human being, a drummer is, um, is going to have some imperfections. So when you play along, it's better to play that music because playing guitar and drums is more like music than guitar and metronome. Does that make sense, guys? So, and I see um, Riff Station isn't available anymore. So Riff Station isn't available anymore, um, but they do have a, um, they do reach out to me and, um, and I should be able to, um, to hook you up with, with that. There's like, I'll give you um, the information that you need because Riff Station is a great piece of software. They're currently making some, some other software. Um, they're turning it into something else, I think. So they took Riff Station, the download, um, off of the website, but just reach out to me, Jim, and, uh, and I should be able to hook you up. So. That is pretty much all the time we've got for tonight's episode. I had a blast. That was so much fun. I'm very excited that I was able to achieve that. Um, got a pretty good streak going on with Pajama Jams. And um, hopefully next week, hopefully next week, yeah, so next week is technically March break, but should be able to uh, get an episode happening. So stay tuned for that. And also, this replay is available as soon as I hit the stop button over here. So you can watch it again if you are awake tonight. And um, and if you're watching it right now and it's the replay, then, I mean, you've already found it. So it's on the page and just um, it should be pinned to the top.
All right, guys, so I had a blast tonight. I, that was so much fun. Fade to Black by Metallica. I'm going to um, be posting more songs. Um, you know, that's what the Pajama Jams are all about. Feel free to request new songs. Um, this is, let me just get you that link one more time. One more time over here. Uh, so rockthis.link slash requests. You'll see up top, rockthis.link slash requests. And you can, um, you can request a song. And I'll take a look at that and um, definitely take it into account. So someone requested Life in the Fast Lane last week, and that's what I did last week. That was a lot of fun. And so definitely check that out, and I'll incorporate your request, and, um, and then we'll have some fun. So... Let's see. Thank you, Ken, uh, for the well wishes. Mark, good jam. Good night. Get some rest. Thanks, buddy. Um, cool. Tommy, thank you, bud. Joe, excellent. Um, cool, cool. Hope to see you guys in the next uh, episodes, the next broadcast. And yeah, I really, um, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Check it out. Hopefully, it, in it improves your, your ability to practice, learn songs faster. And stay tuned for the next Pajama Jam. So this is Steve, a.k.a. Void, signing off. Thank you so much, and we'll talk soon.